Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hello, and today we're with our, our very special guest, Stephen Campbell, who you may remember from uh, the series of The Brain Whisperer uh, that uh, he just completed. But if you haven't, I think you're going to want to take a look at them first. But John, hello, John, and hello, Stephen. Hello, how are you? <laughs> good morning, Stephen. How are you? Good, I'm good. Thanks for having me. Thanks for yeah. having me back. This is going to be so much fun. Steve, uh, I think everybody's interested in weight loss, but before we get going on that, because uh, I'm very excited about that personally, um, I think it's important for you to maybe reiterate briefly the principles that you went over in those first four foundational videos and and just a reminder that everybody really should watch those and get the yeah. the sense of how this all works from that before they watch this video but it, just repeat those general Absolutely. principles i'm glad that you left this open in the beginning because they're so foundational that what i talk about today when i talk about losing weight would be lost if you don't understand these principles so principle one and we're talking about what we've learned about the brain in the last 60 years your brain's believing everything you tell it without question. Ooh, that's scary. <laughs> and that's wonderful because when you say, I just cannot lose this weight, your brain says, oh, okay, yeah, you're right, you can't. And then make sure you can't. That's the scary part. But when you say, I am losing this weight, your brain says, oh, okay. And then it becomes obsessed with finding ways for you to lose this weight. That's number one. Principle one, your brain believes what you tell it. Principle two, we do not have one self-image. We have thousands, millions. I've never seen a study that talks about how many self-images. We have a self-image for every single thing that we do. So I have a self-image for how I see myself as a uh, uh, teacher as a father, as a grandfather. So we have all these self images. Those self images are learned. You weren't born with them and they're based on your self talk. They're based on what you say to yourself about yourself. So when you say I'm really overweight, your brain says, yep, you are because it's basically creating self images based on what you say. So that's number two. Number three, we can replace those self images. Notice I didn't say change because the brain does not want you to change. The brain wants to keep you right where you're at. The brain wants to keep you safe. So actually it does not want you to lose that weight, which we'll talk about in a second. So that's number three. We can replace those self images with new self images. And I'll tell you how we can do that in a few minutes. Finally, when we get discouraged, because we do, because we do not weight, lose weight like this, we lose weight like this. And when we get discouraged, our feelings get a hold. And basically, our feelings are not coming from losing weight. They're coming from what we're saying about losing weight. Our feelings primarily are coming from our beliefs. So now we're going to put all these things together and talk about how you can lose weight. So this is going to be an exciting thing. Okay. It definitely is. Definitely yes. is. So let's just begin with this fact. Your brain doesn't want you to lose weight. Why? Because it's different. And the brain doesn't like changes. The brain doesn't like anything different because the brain's job is to keep you safe. If there is a famine, you would be safe because you're overweight. Can you see that? So the brain doesn't want you to lose weight. So what do you do with that? Okay, let's go back to what I said. Your brain believes everything you tell it. So let me give you an example. The best way to teach is examples. When my father died, he was very, very young. He died, I think, partially because he was overweight. And Mary said to me, my wife, as we were driving away from the memorial service, if you die early, I will kill you. I said, oh. Okay. And I was about 40 pounds more than I should be. So I said, okay, I'll, I'll lose this weight. So I got up and swam and, and ran and I'd lose maybe two or three pounds in a week. And then I would gain them all back on the weekend, ice cream, 
chocolate chip cookies, usually the night where Mary, where Mary couldn't see me, okay? I did that for 25 years. I couldn't lose the weight. Why? Because of what was going on in here. Let me explain. I would get up and I'll look in the mirror and I'll give myself a pep talk. You are 240 pounds. You've got to lose 40 pounds. When I said you are 240 pounds, what did my brain say? Okay. And then it made sure I stayed at 240 pounds because that's how I saw myself. After 25 years of this, I said, this really is not good. This isn't working. So I began studying the physiology of the brain and psychology and all these other things. In fact, as you can see, my library is packed with books on psychology. And I realized everything begins up here. It doesn't begin when you're eating. It begins with what you're thinking. And I was thinking the wrong thing. I was saying, I am 240 pounds. And my brain said, okay. And then it kept me there. So I said, I need to change my thinking. So that's when affirmations came in, which we'll be talking about, not in this section, but in another one. And I said to myself, I am 200 pounds and I look fantastic. That's an affirmation. My brain freaked out. It said, no, 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 no. Look at the mirror. Look at the scale. You don't weigh 200, 200 pounds. You weigh 240. And that's when I said to my brain, I'm the boss. That's how I see myself. I'm locking on to that. And my brain said, okay, you are the boss. I'm a captive audience. I can't do, I can only listen to you. You are the only person I listen to. Now, let me put a little codicil here. People say to me, well, see, what about what others say to me? Listen, what others say to you do not become a part of you until you agree with them. So let's go back. So I created this affirmation. And I said, I look great at 200 pounds. At first, my brain freaked out, but I locked on to that. My favorite story is when I was a little boy, my dad taught me how to ride a bicycle. And he took me out to road, took the trainers off, and he said, now, Steve, before I give you a little push, and don't worry, I'll run next to you. You see that rock in the road about 50 feet? Yes, Daddy. Don't run into that rock. And I got down on my bike, petting me like mad, went into really impress my dad and what happened right into the rock that's the way your brain works so i locked on to being 200 pounds and every single time i sat down for a meal i said okay i have a choice i can either like eat like the person who weighs 240 which means everything including two zeros and everything else, or, or I can lock on to weighing 200 because I've decided that's how I see myself. Now, here's what's exciting. When I began doing that, when I began locking on to being 200 pounds, I began losing the weight. But it got easier and easier. Why? Because of another fact that we now know about the brain. And that fact is called neuroplasticity. And what happens is when you lock on to two new messages about yourself, and in this case it's losing weight, our brain rewires itself. So that I saw myself at 200 pounds, even though I was still 240 and then 235, and then 230, and then 225, etc. In my brain, I saw myself at 200 pounds, and every single time I sat down for a meal and locked onto a person who weighed 200 pounds, it was harder for me to eat a lot of stuff because in my mind, I was not 240, I was 200. And eventually, I'm now 200 pounds. 
Now, here's something really important. There is still a self-image in my mind of a 240-pound person. Do you hear me? It's still there. How do I know? Because I've never had a lobotomy. So it's in there somewhere. But here's the point. The more I lock on to being 200 pounds, the more that self-image of a 240-pound person gets shoved in the background, in the background of my brain, which is basically the prefrontal cortex right here. And that 240-pound self-image becomes smaller and smaller and smaller. It never, never, never leaves. I could, in a second, eat like a 240-pound person, and admittedly, sometimes I do, especially during Christmas and the holidays. But when I lock on to the 200-pound person, I eat like a 200-pound person, and I don't gain the weight the way I used to. And if I do, I lock on to that, to the 200-pound person, and I lose it back. Okay, let me share with you another story. I was doing seminars all over the, the east, the, uh, the north bay of San Francisco. And I got a call from a physician who ran a company called Medlite. Her name was Jennifer Huber. She's still here. And she sat me down and she said, Steve, here's the challenges. I work with grossly obese people, not people who are kind of overweight, but people who, if they don't lose the weight, they're going to get diabetes and all the other things. So they come into my practice, and I give them the diets and the exercise regimen, and we do liposuction, and we do all these things, and they lose the weight. But when they get off the program, they gain it all back. I need for you to help me with how they think. So for many, many, many years, I went into her practice every Tuesday night from 7 to 8 and worked with her patients and gave presentations and basically shared with them what I'm sharing with you. Here's the point. Losing weight doesn't start with how you eat. It doesn't start with how you exercise. It starts with how you see yourself up here. If you see yourself at 240, you're going to stay at 240. But when you say, wait a minute, I am the boss. My brain listens to me. My brain locks onto whatever lock I, I lock onto. I'm locking on to being 200 pounds. And I'm eating like a person who weighs 200 pounds. And I'm running and exercising and swimming like a person who weighs 200 pounds. Eventually, I will become 200 pounds. Let me share with you another story that really illustrates this point. I taught math at the University of San Francisco. And one day, a student came to my office, sat down. She was very shy. And she said, Mr. Campbell, I'm really glad you're my professor because I am a C student in math. I said, what do you mean, Sue? She said, I have never gotten above a C in a math test. I'm a C student. So I worked with her. And she got an A in the first midterm. And I gave her the test, and she absolutely freaked out. She said, <gasps> and then she said this, oh, Mr. Campbell, this is a mistake. What do you mean, Sue? She said, I have never gotten above a C in a math test. You must have made a mistake. And I said, I didn't. This is a genuine A. So then she looked at it longer, and then her face just lit up. I'll never forget this. It lit up. Her eyes became bright. And she said, do you know what this means, Mr. Campbell? And, of course, now I'm getting really excited. So I sat down with her, and I said, yes, Sue, but I want you to tell me what does this mean. This means, Mr. Campbell, that when I flunk the next test, I can still maintain my C. Sue, <laughs> just get an A in every test. She said, oh, I can't. Why? I'm a C student. And that's exactly what happened. She flunked the next test. She got a C in the course. So I sat down with her 
with the A, and I said, Sue, answer me this. What would have happened if you had flunked this first test? Do you know what she said? Without a moment's hesitation, she said, easy. I would have studied like crazy to get an A on the next test. I'd have to to maintain my C. I said, Sue, just get an A in every test. She said, I can't. Why? Because I'm a C student. I'm 240 pounds. I'm overweight. I can't do this. It's too hard. I've tried it before. Or, or, or. Do you know when your old life ended? One second ago. So when did your new life begin? One second ago. Now do the math. 60 seconds per minute, 60 minutes per hour, 24 hours per day. In one 24-hour period, you have 86,400 new opportunities for a new life every single day. All you have to do is choose to take them. And when you do, your brain says, oh, okay, is it true? Don't even care. All I care is what you tell me. So you decide I'm losing weight and you begin losing weight. And then zip, a weekend comes, a party comes, you look on the scale, you've gained two pounds back. And you get really discouraged. What do you do? Well, what a lot of us do is we say, oh, my gosh, how could I have been so stupid? Unfortunately, when you do that, your brain picks up and says, oh, I know. Remember what you ate last weekend? And remember what you did this time? And remember all this? And what we do is we almost get out this list. We still go down the list of all the dumb things we've ever done. Now, this is really important to understand, dear listeners. When you do that, your brain doesn't know that those memories of when you screwed up happened a week ago, two weeks ago, a month ago, a year ago. The brain's recording them again, along with the feelings, those defeated feelings that you have when you get on the scale. And then we carry that stuff around. Here's what I want to share with you right now. You don't have to do that anymore. Starting when? Right now. Starting right now. Okay, right. Steve. So what do you do when you mess up and you get on the scale and you gain three pounds over? What do you do with that? You use three wonderful words. You know what the words are? Well, the next time. The next time I'll do it this way and the next time I'll do it that way. And when you say the next time, you're saying three things. Number one, you're saying there is a next time. Dear friends, you don't lose weight like this. You use weight like this. There is always a next time. We have as many next times as we want. Isn't that exciting? Yeah. That just gives me the chills. Number two, when you say the next time, you are saying, I will never, ever, ever give up. And when you say that, you lock on to that, lock the rock on the road. And then your brain rewires itself so that you become incredibly persistent in losing the weight. Okay? Number three, when you say the next time, you're saying, you know what? I don't lose weight like this. I lose weight like this. But that doesn't mean I'm a failure. It simply means last weekend I messed up. But just because I maybe failed last time, that doesn't mean I'm a failure. This is interesting. Thomas Edison was asked how it felt to fail 999 times looking for the filament of a light bulb. You know what he said to a New York reporter? He said, you know what? I didn't fail 999 times. I found 999 ways that didn't work. Hmm. That's the way our brain works. So let's go back and review. Number one, your brain and you can be your best friend. 
because it believes everything you tell it without question. Number two, your self-images are based on your self-talk. Listen to what you're saying to yourself and replace it with positive messages. Notice I didn't say change. Change is really hard. The brain hates change. So we're not going to change anything. We're replacing. So I have a self-image of a 240-pound person, but I have not seen him for years and years and years because I locked on to being 200. Number three, when you get discouraged, realize that your feelings are coming not from gaining those two pounds. They're coming from what you've said about gaining those two pounds. And what you say is, you know what? I've got the rest of my life to lose the rest of this, and I can do it. I am doing it. And what does your brain say? Oh, okay. Is it true? Don't even care. Let me share with you one last story, and then we'll close. I was on my way to work one morning when I was teaching. I was waiting for the light to change, and a kid came up in a very, very fancy car, looked at my Toyota. I knew what was going to happen. The light changed. He went peeling in front of me, roaring up the freeway, passing everyone. As I had this, as I watched him passing everyone, I had this epiphany. How many cars are already in front of him? Millions. How many cars are behind him? Millions. So, dear listener, maybe it's not a matter of how fast you get there. Maybe it's a matter of you going in the right direction. But even when we go in the right direction, sometimes we just run out of gas. Sometimes we get a flat tire. Sometimes we even lose our way. But you know what? You can buy some more gas. You can replace the tire. You can get a map. And what's so wonderful is when you think this way, your brain says what? Okay. Is it true? Don't care. All I care about is what you tell me. You say it, I believe it. You lock onto it, you know what I will do? I will do everything I can to make it true in your life. Wow. That's exciting. That's powerful. Mm. Here you go. Steve, um, I love the three words the next time. I think that, as you explained it, they're magic words. They're, Thank they're you. really. They now, are, that's yeah. not the same as an affirmation, though, is it? An affirmation, no. An affirmation is a, a statement. Well, when we, get, when we get the affirmations in this morning, I'll, I'll be explaining all that. Okay, an okay. affirmation is a statement that you make in, about a goal that, that in your mind has already been accomplished. And we'll talk about that when we talk about goals at work. So, so it, is, it is us telling ourselves that we've reached our goal, in this case, weight loss, 200 pounds, um, even though we haven't done it yet. That's right. That's right. And that puts our brain in a mode that makes it happen. Or, That's right. And we talk about that. more accurately. We'll talk about that. Supports us to make yeah. it happen. Yes. So that was my next question. That's where I'm going with this. And that is, um, they they talk about, particularly in weight loss programs, uh, it you're not just losing weight. You're changing your lifestyle. That's right. They talk about mm -hmm. changing your life. So that's right. Obviously, including your doctor friend, everybody who teaches weight loss wants you to make this permanent. That's right. And of course. <laughs> Every time I've lost weight, I wanted to make it permanent too. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the the issue really is constantly telling ourselves our affirmation, our goal. Yeah. yeah. And constantly reinforcing who we want to be. Right. So we push that image of who we really are right now back. And back. gets smaller and smaller. Well, you don't and have our brain push, dominates. You don't have to push it back. You lock on to what you want to be so much that the what you were sort of gets pushed back automatically. So basically that affirmation that affirmation is 
is what you, you, your brain locks onto, yes. and everything else is changed to change back to right. uh, the bad habit, if you will. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I don't like the word change. I like the word replace because the old stuff, all the stuff that you've ever done, including the bad habits, are still there. They're still there. They will never oh, leave. That's, that's why all of this is so discouraging because they come back and they, 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 you know, they reveal their little head like a gopher out of the ground. They're still there. But what happens is we get really discouraged and then we go back to the old ways. I'll be talking about that at the very end when we talk about feelings. So we'll be talking all about that stuff today. Cool. Yeah. So you mentioned all the bad habits are still there. I, I what went through my mind was the ice cream is still in the refrigerator. Yeah. The, the my favorite hamburger place, the double cheeseburger with mushrooms, that's still yeah. on the corner. It's still in the corner. You know, there, <laughs> all the things, are, all the temptations are there. But you so, know what I do? This might help you. You know what I do when I drive by a hamburger place and I make the decision, I'm not going to have that hamburger, okay? The hamburger is probably 600, 700 calories, okay? Oh, each don't pound, I wish you were that low. Each, each pound of weight is 3,600 calories, okay? So I drive by the hamburger place and I decide I am not going to have that hamburger. Now I go over my life over one year, okay? Let's say I do that as a habit every two weeks. So this time I don't stop by the hamburger place. I, I mean, I don't stop and get a hamburger. I don't. Every single time I don't, I have basically gone down 700 calories. Well, if I stop by the hamburger place, let's see, just do the math, 720, five times... That's five times 700 is 3,500 calories. I just lost a pound because I haven't stopped there. That's what I do. Or the Snickers candy bar. Or every single time I don't do it, I say, if this is a, if this is a lifestyle, if this is a pattern, and this is what I'm doing, this is how I'm losing the weight. And it does. It works. It's wonderful. How? It, it, so there's an element of self-denial here. Oh, yeah. How do you reconcile that? The self-denial, which is kind of a negative thing, versus the positive of an affirmation of seeing yourself the way you want to be. Instead of denying myself, I think of the feelings I have now that I'm so, I, I think of the feelings I have about myself now that I weigh so much less. And it's worth it to me. Yeah. So I don't lock onto the negative, I lock into the positive. I get on the scale, I say, my God, I'm 200 pounds. Well, you know what? I think that this is the great place for the, we've teased enough on uh, affirmations and goals and other things that I know that we're going to be speaking about uh, shortly. So what I, I want to uh, recommend to our audience, if you haven't watched uh, the four part series uh, that, that we did recently, it'll be in a playlist on our YouTube channel. Uh, go there and uh, take a peek at that and, um, and then come back and watch this and watch the next series of these that will be coming out next week and the week after. Uh, and uh, uh, then uh, maybe when we're done with the next four, then you and I and John, uh, look, uh, John has already come out of the closet and says he'd like to lose some weight, okay? <laughs> and uh, quite frankly, I don't have to come out of any closet. Uh, we can, you know, seeing is believing. So I'd like to lose some weight as well. Uh, I will. Wait, I'm going to try to practice. I will. Yeah, you will. No, no, I'm... I'm I'm coming up with what I'm going to look like when I'm done with it and how great I feel. But that's for another day. So we need to stop here because otherwise we're going to do the next three parts without taking a breath. So let's go take a breath and look forward. Uh, thank you, uh, Steve, for just this brilliant. Uh, I know, John, you'll want to say I'm going to let you close, John. But so thank you, Steve, again, as always, for the clarity with which you speak and particularly the the illustrations you give, which Thank help you. us really begin to understand how we control, can put positive thoughts into our mind, which we'll get to. Go ahead, John. Thank you. Good. Well, I, all I wanted to do, Art, was tease uh, the next bunch of videos. Because, Steve, mm. as I recall, you said in the four foundational videos, they, they were four that, you know, four steps, if you will, one, two, three, four, to get the understanding of how this works. Yeah. And... Today's video on weight loss or, or setting your mind 
and how to start losing weight um, was really one of a series. Maybe it's not a series. It's a series of uh, individual issues. So we're not coming back to weight loss. This isn't a weight loss program. We're not going to mm -hmm. do three more videos on weight loss. No. Am I correct? We're, what's next week? Of, what's the next video about that we're going to talk with you about? Oh, with me? Talking to me? Yeah. 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 What, what's the subject what of our next video? What we want to talk about next is, let me make sure I have this correct. Where do our self-images come from? Exactly where do they come from? If we understand where we come from, we're in better control. Okay, and, then, uh, and they're just not sort of showing up. We want to talk about that. So we're going to talk about that so, next week. So goals, goals that work. Is that what we're talking about? Uh, goals will work will be after that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And, and then right. affirmations. And then affirmations. But we're gonna. All we right. need to. We need to say goodbye, to everybody, because oh, otherwise we're going to talk about it right now, and okay. we want to save this for next week, the week <laughs> after, and the week after. Okay. And I affirm that that's the way my brain works. So uh, thank you everybody for joining us. Thank you again, Steve. Goodbye, for everybody. Joining us, and we'll see you in a week or so. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.